All right, hello everybody. So uh, this is just a brief overview and a hands-on kind of guide through what is called the paramedic method. Um, this is a way to uh, craft your writing during its final stages in a way that focuses on concision and precision. So, uh, so this has been around for a while. It's a technique that's been around for a while. It was originally developed by um, a scholar and practitioner named Richard Lanham. Uh, you can actually look this book up. It's available on Google Books, I believe. Um, and the goal that it has is editing writing, okay? Um, the goal is to make your prose easier to read, simpler, more concise, um, and so on, okay? Uh, this is something that a lot of writers struggle with at all different levels of the writing process and their, their career as writers. Um, but the benefit of this is that it's, it's really simple, um, it's systematic, and it zeroes in on the key problems that writers often have um, in terms of um, concision and being precise, right? I'm trying to say, saying exactly what you need to say, okay? Uh, so there are seven main steps here, and I'm going to show you how you can adapt them for uh, electronic work, say, on Google Docs. So this is just the, uh, the Purdue OWL website that has a good overview of the paramedic method. Uh, so basically, you're looking for problem points, okay? You're looking for places in the prose that are going to be hot spots, that, that people who have been doing this for a long time understand are going to be hot spots, okay? So we're relying on their expertise. Uh, and those are prepositions and verbs to be, okay? Those are really the places where a lot of problems start and often end because typically we don't ever really go back systematically and kind of revise them uh, out. Um, so prepositions are problematic because what they do, and these are, these are just a few of them, there are actually many more um, than, than this, but this gives you an example of what they are. Um, prepositions are problematic because what they do is they express a relationship between two things. Um, I'm not going to talk about the grammatical definition or whatever, right? But, but functionally speaking, that's what a preposition does. It expresses a relationship between two things, okay? Uh, the pen that is on the table. It's a relationship between pen and table. Um, the, uh, the, the book that is about love, okay? Uh, book and love. So you can imagine that if you have too many prepositions, especially in a single sentence, things are gonna get really complicated really fast, okay? So this is gonna look for prepositions. It's also gonna look for verbs to be. Now, you've all probably heard your writing professors or teachers in other classes or other contexts talk about the passive voice, okay? Well, this is in, this is related to the passive voice, but we're not really talking just, just about the passive voice. We will be dealing with the passive voice in the paramedic method, okay? But all verbs to be um, can have the potential to be problematic because they uh, sort of, they, they allow you to get by without being precise and without being concise, okay? So it's not a coincidence that the first verb you typically learn when you're learning a new language is to be, okay? And the reason you learn it when you're learning a new language is because you can use it to get by in a lot of cases, in a lot of different circumstances, and it works with other verbs and other uh, parts of speech to, to help you kind of get your point across in more and more complex ways or um, less and less complex ways, as the case may be. So um, verbs to be typically, they have a tendency, especially when they're in the passive voice, to sort of stretch out a sentence unnecessarily and to confuse who or what is actually doing the action of the verb because that's what verbs are supposed to do they're supposed to they're supposed to convey an action okay and you can already tell that is is not really very actiony right <laughs> so these are two key problems prepositions and verbs to be okay so the paramedic method asks you to notice these things first of all and then you ask yourself a series of questions where is the action this is related to the verb form okay and then what you're going to do is once you identify that in each sentence is try to change that action into something like a simple verb, okay? Um, by moving the doer of the action into the subject position of the sentence, 
Okay, so for instance, instead of um, saying, in this paragraph is a demonstration of the use of good style in the writing of a report, here it's clear that is is the is a big problem okay it definitely has a lot of prepositions but is is also a big problem uh, and what this will do is show you that you can turn the real action of the war of the sentence which is demonstration right into a verb itself demonstrates so what is doing the demonstration right well this paragraph this paragraph demonstrates good style okay so already I've eliminated a ton of these prepositions right? <laughs> uh, by just trying to find and fix um, the, 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 the verb and the action in the sentence, okay? Trying to clarify that. Um, and then you want to eliminate any unnecessarily slow windups um, or any unnecessary windups like in this paragraph or um, the point I wish to make is that or it is widely known that, right? Notice that they typically have lots of prepositions Okay, <laughs> and um, they also have verbs to be. Right? After reviewing the results of your previous research and in light of the irrelevant information found within the context of the study, there is ample. Da, 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 da. Okay, so um, we want to try to eliminate any unnecessarily slow windups, and then finally any redundancies. Now, a lot of writers have redundancies in the sense of um, you might use two words that mean rel roughly the same thing instead of one. Okay. And often, you know, young writers will do this uh, to try to be more precise, right? Or on the other hand, to try to make themselves sound, you know, smarter and fancier, right? Um, but if two words mean the same thing, just use one, okay? Because remember, we're not writing in the abstract, we're writing for an audience, okay? We're writing for someone who is going to be reading your prose, okay? All right, so that's basically the paramedic method, okay? And you can see that um, what's happened here in this example, okay, is a good is a good uh, is, is a good way to sort of get a sense of what's going on here. Um, in this paragraph is a demonstration of the use of good style in the writing of a report. Now, I think this sentence has probably been you know made more re redundant <laughs> and and wordy, you know, just to to illustrate, but it gives a really good illustration. Um, so all the things that are circled are prepositions, in, of, of, in, of, okay? This has five prepositions in a tiny sentence. That is way too many, first of all. <laughs> um, and you can tell because it sounds kind of, it sounds, it sounds like you're writing, um, I don't know, for a government office or something like that, like fine print or it's just, it's not, it's not good, good style because it's just too wordy. It doesn't get to the point. Um, and, uh, and there, there are more elegant ways to say it exactly, you know, to say exactly what you, you want to say, okay? So those are all the prepositions. And then here is the verb to be, is, okay? Now, once we've circled these, uh, these once we've identified the prepositions and the verbs to be form, right, the verbs to be, then we want to think, where's the action of this sentence? So what is the verb thing? What is the, what is the action that's being done in this sentence, okay? So the action is is this idea of demonstrating, demonstration. Technically, right, is is the verb, right? That's where the action is in this sentence, okay? But the action of the sentence, the thing that's happening in the sentence is this, is this demonstration, okay? Right now, this is a noun. It's a very abstract noun called a nominalization. You can tell because they usually have these IONs, right, at the end. There, there are other forms, but that's one good way to see. Um, Anything that looks like this, you can almost always turn into a verb, okay? Demonstration is a noun, a demonstration, my demonstration, his demonstration, but you can turn it into a verb really easy by, by doing just that. He demonstrates, okay? It makes it the sentence different, right? But that's part of the point, okay? So here's the action, right? Demonstration, demonstrating is the action. We want to change it into a simple verb. So instead of demonstration, we want to say demonstrates, okay? And then what we want to do is move the doer of the demonstrating into the subject position, okay? So who's demonstrating? What's demonstrating? Okay, the paragraph is demonstrating. So we want to be very clear about that. This paragraph demonstrates, okay? So we've already um, revised in that way. This paragraph demonstrates. Uh, and then just eliminate any redundancies, okay? Of the use of good style in the writing of a report, well, 
you can really simply reduce that by saying this paragraph demonstrates good style in reports or good style in report writing, something like that. Okay. So that is the paramedic method in a kind of a, a nutshell. Okay.